Close your eyes and watch your breath. Take a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths and notice where you feel the breathing in the body. So watch that sensation. And if long breathing feels good, keep it up. If it doesn't feel good, you can change. You can try shorter breathing, faster breathing, slower, deeper, more shallow, heavier, lighter. Try to find what kind of breathing feels good for the body right now and see if you can maintain that breathing. Then you can maintain your attention with the breath. If the mind starts to wander off, just try to breathe in a way that's even more comfortable to pull its attention back. And if you do wander off, we'll just drop whatever thought it was. You don't need to finish it and come right back. You're trying to get the mind to circle around one topic for a while. As it circles around that one topic, it creates a good energy. It can settle down and it can see itself, but it also creates an energy that spreads out. This is an important principle to remember when, when someone has passed away. This happened to Aaron. We can't communicate with him the way we used to, but still there is a current in the mind that can connect. You send off good energy, and if he's sensitive, he'll pick it up. So you want to make sure you're sending off good energy. This is why when someone has passed away, it's traditional to be generous, to take the precepts, and to meditate. Because when the mind does those activities, it is sending off a good energy. And that's what can be picked up by the people around you. You may have noticed someone walks into a room, and the room will immediately change without their having said or done anything. There's a current to the mind. And you want to make sure that current is good. What this means is that you take refuge in good things. We would like to take refuge in one another, and we can to some extent while we're alive, but aging, illness, and death can get in the way. And thing is, they're normal. One of the reflections the Buddha has you to make every day is that aging is normal, illness is normal, death is normal, separation is going to happen. And what we have to fall back on are our actions. And so what are your actions? Your thoughts, your words, and deeds. And where do they come from? They come from the mind. So the mind needs to be trained. So these our actions can be a good refuge. Now, in some cases we learn from the Buddha what those good actions are in general. Like the precepts, you just don't kill any living being at all. You don't steal anything, have no illicit sex, no lying at all, no intoxicants at all. Those things are true across the board. The other things, so you have to be a little bit more observant for yourself to figure out what's skillful in any one situation, which is another reason why you want to get the mind to be alert and mindful and still here in the present moment. So it can be fully present for the decisions as you're making them, because it's your decisions that shape your life. And you want to make decisions that you can fall back on, then you can take as your refuge. So you're telling the mind to stay with the breath, and if it can't stay more than five breaths, okay, you've got, you've got work to do. Because other things are going to come in life as well, and you're going to tell the mind to do one thing, and it's going to want to do something else. And you have to have developed the mindfulness and the alertness and the sense of ardency. In other words, you want to put your whole heart into doing this well, so that you can keep in control of the mind, so that it does what you want it to do. And you have this goodness that you can fall back on, no matter what happens to yourself, what happens to other people. There was a time when Sariputta, who was one of the Buddha's disciples, passed away, and Ananda, another one of the Buddha's disciples, who was a very sensitive person, came to the Buddha and informed him of Sariputta's passing. And as he said, my, I felt like the directions were all out of line. Everything was dark in all directions, realizing that Sariputta had passed away. And the Buddha asked him, when Sariputta passed away, did he take virtue with him? No. Did he take concentration, discernment, all the good things that we can do in life? Did he take those with him? No. Those are still there. Those you can still take as your refuge. So think about that. We have our refuge in the goodness that we do. We can help one another while we're still alive and still strong. But strength is something, physical strength is something that wastes away. Life is something that wastes away. So you want to have something else to fall back on. And it's the goodness you do. So train your mind so it has that goodness that you can really fall back on and with a sense of trust, a sense of confidence. And while you're doing that, you can trust also that the influences of this are not going to benefit you alone. They're going to fit, benefit other people as well. People who are touched by your actions, people who are touched by the currents of your mind, they will benefit too. 
So the goodness we do it protects us in all directions and provides goodness that spreads around. It's not like the happiness that comes, say, from material gain or from status or from praise. Because that kind of happiness has boundaries. Some people gain a particular form of wealth and other people have to lose something. Other people gain status, other people have to lose it. But with the goodness that comes from generosity, virtue, and meditation, that doesn't have any boundaries. It's good for you and it's good for the people around you, which is why it's a safe refuge. <laughs>